Hey there guys, and welcome to another episode of Ask Exterminator. Uh, this is a series where you guys ask me questions in the comments and I answer them. Uh, so this week I'm answering questions from last week's video in this series. If you have a question you would like me to answer for next week, leave it in the comments of this current video. <clears throat> Excuse me, it can be factory related, game related, or unrelated to both or either. Uh, and there's some good ones as always this week. So let's just get started here from Gearbot. I say, hey, just wondering what your thoughts are on Dyson Sphere Program, and they linked a trailer, which I have watched. Um, that is a new game coming out, I want to say on the 20th or 21st of this month, and it looks really interesting. Um, it looks, I actually hadn't heard of it, and some people on stream mentioned it first. Um, looks very much like a Factorio, like interplanetary Factorio type of deal, kind of satisfactory-ish as well. Um, but I think it has like a factorial perspective, like the top down type of thing. It looks really cool. Um, I definitely think I plan to get it and, and give it a go. Um, based on just looking at it, I'm a little worried the optimization is not going to be there. Like I'm a little worried it's going to be a bit laggy and, and stuff, but we'll see. Um, so that, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Definitely looks cool. Um... There's actually not a ton of questions this week. So the next one is from Ofice or Ofis says, what editor program do you use for YouTube videos? Um, not really any. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I use Windows Movie Maker for the very, very basic, simple editing I do. Like for these videos, I just take a, uh, a raw file from OBS. I have like all the base tours and uh, I stick it in Windows Movie Maker. I put the audio on top of it. I mute the video. And then I process it out all combined, and that's basically it. <laughs> I don't really do any editing. Um, I, I do render my videos. So for all my other videos, um, I use actually a Python script um, that one of my members wrote for me quite a long time ago that actually upscales um, the video to 4K and then also adds in my outro to it. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that counts as editing or not, but um, I do that. Um, another kind of follow-up question, I think, from Derpamu, um, from last week, they asked about, like, YouTube and which one I prefer and which one I make more income from and such. Um, so they say, thanks for my extensive answer. Um, you're very welcome. Um, and then a follow-up question. You say that it's roughly three times as lucrative to stream. So I said this last time when I answered the question. But the numbers you said were that in the ballpark are three times as many hours streaming than making videos. Does that mean that, or does that... Does that mean the money per hour invested is in the same ballpark? From what you say and other comments here, I gather that streaming would be much more scalable, i.e. you could stream more and have roughly the same income per hour, um, whereas just making more videos is not as easy since it would require coming up with more ideas, etc., and more time investment, editing, um, and wouldn't be as straightforward as a Reddit Weekly and Ask Exterms, right? Um, yes, correct. Um, however, uh, the, the interesting thing is, is uh, yes, that I suppose the numbers are in the same ballpark that, um, so you say, so I said it's roughly three times as lucrative to stream, but um, I did basically say that I spent three times as much time uh, streaming. However, uh, that is, I don't want to say a full coincidence, it's somewhat of a coincidence. Um, Whereas, yes, that's the case. However, it doesn't really continue to scale like that. So, like, if I were to increase my YouTube uh, content creation by three times to then match my current streaming amount of time, um, I can basically absolutely guarantee you that my income from YouTube would not triple. Uh, like, <laughs> there's absolutely... Unless, like, this kind of... It, it does kind of work that way during, like, big releases. Like, when Factorio came out on Steam initially a long time ago, or when 1.0 came out, um, and I was just cranking out videos, there was a whole ton of new people, new audience. Then that kind of held true a little bit. Um, for, like, a, the first month when 1.0 came out, my YouTube income was actually matching my stream income, um, which was pretty impressive. Um, like, like, impressive to me that it was able to do that. Uh, but, like, right now... Uh, if I were to spend three times as much time doing YouTube, um, there's absolutely no way that my YouTube income would go up by three times. And 
then be like match my stream income that just wouldn't be possible um unless i hit some crazy super hot video topic or something on multiple videos <laughs> you know it's just unfortunately like i said like you said too um streaming is much more scalable now again it doesn't scale in exact amounts like if i were to spend twice the amount of time streaming as i do now so if i were to double my stream time i don't think that my income would double from streaming um it would definitely go up a lot more than if I were to double my YouTube uh, content creation, like my YouTube, if I doubled the amount of time I spent on YouTube from say three hours a week, just a number of three hours a week to six hours a week, my YouTube income would not double. Um, it just doesn't really work that way, uh, unfortunately, uh, which is, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. So yeah, YouTube, not only coming up with ideas and stuff and not all of them being straightforward as things like this or Reddit Weekly or Mod Spotlights, um, is it just like, it all depends on the video performance, you know? So unless I just hit some gold mine of like, <laughs> you know, of like a video that just brings in like a bajillion views, um, it doesn't unfortunately really scale quite like that. Um, so I hope that kind of clears up the question. So yes, it is somewhat of a coincidence that my stream income is three times my YouTube income and I spend three times the amount of time streaming. Um, but that is just kind of how it happens to be um like i said if i match my youtube content creation time to my stream time right now um there's absolutely no way that my youtube income would like raise up to match my uh my stream income there's just no way that that would be possible unfortunately um so there's that question um going down here uh camden says what do you do for your other part-time job yeah so last time um, I mentioned that I have a part-time job, uh, that I, I've taken a part-time job so somewhat recently. Um, and actually it's, it's a really great part-time job. Um, I actually work, um, I work part-time at a Lego store. So you may hear me talking a lot, have heard me talking a lot about, um, about Lego and, and how I'm kind of obsessed with it. And I, I was before I took the job, but then like, that's part of why I took the job, but also for income. Um, and now it's just like, it's a great job, honestly, like sure it's retail, but like, as far as retail goes, I'd say it's probably like one of the best type of retail jobs you could have. Like, it's awesome. I love it. Um, it does of course take time away from this. Um, I'm trying my best to keep up with both during the holidays was really crazy. Um, but I, I'm kind of, I'm not putting in nearly as many hours there, but that's what my other part-time job is, is I work at a Lego store. Which is, uh, I feel very fortunate, honestly, to get the job. I think it's a very competitive position. Um, and I just got hired during the holiday rush and stuff. And they decided to keep me on um, after that. Because it was going to be like a temporary holiday position. Um, which, yeah. So it's awesome. It's, I mean, everyone's great to work with. You get to talk to customers about Lego all day. Like, <laughs> it doesn't really feel like work, to be honest. Um, so, so I feel very fortunate there. Uh so Mr. Titus says, do you have any ambition for completing all the achievements for Factorio? If so, which one did you feel most accomplished for and which one do you go for first on purpose? Um, well, first off, um, I don't really have any ambition to get the achievements. I'm not an achievement hunter. I never have been. Like for any game I've ever played, I've never really gone for hunting achievements. Um, uh, and... I'm trying to think, like, I've got obviously some just by playing. I've got probably about half of them just by playing the game. Um, in terms of, in terms of, like, which one did I feel most accomplished for? Again, I don't really purposely get them, so I guess maybe the green circuit one, the 20 mil green circuit one, where I was doing it, I think I got it in my sitting support of space, Mega Base, where I was doing 4K Science a Minute, and it just kind of happened, and I was like, oh, hey, I made 20 million circuits, that's cool. Um... And, uh, yeah, I just, I wasn't really trying to get it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the answer there. I just, I don't really care much for achievements. Personally, I like to just kind of set my own goals and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's kind of, uh, my, the best answer I can give. I'm trying to think of any other way to expand upon that. Um, there's not really any I go for first is either, um, it, it, they just happened by accident, I suppose. Um, let me see. Adam Jenkins says, do you have a gaming chair? Um, I do not have a gaming chair. Uh, I 
uh I, I i don't know like one they seem kind of expensive but also all these people i see like i haven't actually sat in a gaming chair so i can't judge based on like personal experience but just looking at them they look really uncomfortable like i i don't really understand the hype for gaming chairs um like they look cool i guess it's kind of like <laughs> you know it's kind of like uh it's kind of like leds and um and lighting in your computer like it looks really cool doesn't actually do anything although i know i know you know increasing performance uh, but yeah no anyway like a chair like they just look really uncomfortable to be honest with you maybe they're not maybe they are really comfortable and i'm totally missing out um i have a chair i've had for like 10 years and it like i find it really comfortable um i've never really found a reason uh aside from my back hurting a bit <laughs> maybe that'd be a reason to get a gaming chair i don't know um but yeah Fred says cats or dogs. Um, I really like both. Um, I have a slight preference to dogs. I've had dogs all my life. I had cats when I was a kid, and then after they passed away, we just didn't have cats again. I, I prefer dogs, but I absolutely have no problem with cats. Um, so it's kind of where I stand there. Um, let me see. Um... Okay, oh, Kuno says, what language would you most like to learn? Uh, that's an interesting question. They go on to say, many of the languages not on my list have no instructional material outside of academic linguistics papers, and their communities are remote, so let's say you magically become fluent in it rather than worry about the mechanics of actually learning it. I'm torn between Czech, Ukrainian, Evenki, I've not heard of that. Another one I haven't heard of, Georgian, and probably a bunch more. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, well, that, reading the second part of your statement um, actually kind of changes my answer. Um, well, I didn't really have an answer yet, but if I could just magically learn a language, um, that would uh, <laughs> that would be great. There's probably a lot of languages I like to learn if I could just magically learn them. I have a very hard time learning new languages. Um, I, I am dyslexic, so I have a hard enough time with English, but uh, if I could just magically learn it, honestly, this is going to sound boring. Well, maybe not boring. That I don't mean boring like it's a boring language, but boring like it's not some like super crazy, like off the wall language. Um, honestly, Spanish, because Spanish would help so much with so many things. Like if I could speak Spanish, um, it would really be helpful. Um, I am, I'm not of the mindset that like, you know, I live in America, I should only need to speak English. I mean, you know, of course, like, that's obviously the main language here, and, like, that's, <laughs> you know, what 90% of the people I run into are going to speak, but there have been situations, and especially now with work, um, I, you know, I work in the area where there are a lot of, um, you know, Hispanic people who come in, and it would actually be very helpful um, for me to be able to speak Spanish and understand Spanish. Um, so if I could just magically learn it, probably Spanish, I think that would be a really, really helpful language to learn. I think it's a really cool language, too. I just have trouble learning new languages. Um, I could throw in another one. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot. Russian. I learned Russian as, well, I was taught Russian um, in middle school and stuff for a couple of years, and I, you know, I, I knew a bit of it back then. I forgot basically all of it, but I really enjoyed it when I was learning it then, so I think I would still really enjoy it. Um, definitely like Russian it would be another one. Um, uh, Quang Ho, H O, um, says, What people related to Factorio do you like most? Wait, what? What people related to Factorio do you like most? Be it Madman, like Aero, Mike, Gluteus, Maximus, artists, Hydebore, devs, Corex, generic YouTubers, Scott, and Sky Oh, oh, like what type of like. Yeah, I, I guess I don't really know a better way to say that. But yeah, so. Um, so I'm going to say like, I don't know, like, do you want, I don't know if they're asking me to cat, like, give a category, um, like artists or devs or generic YouTubers um, or like specific people. Um, I mean, I like the devs, obviously. <laughs> the devs are great. They're awesome in their community. They've been really, really great to me. Um, they've they've treated me very well. Um, I, I can't, I don't know if, I mean, 
I really, I really, I really like V, um, Backlav from the dev team, mostly just because I've, like, interacted with him the most, uh, him and Clonin. I actually did, funny story, I actually did a couple playthroughs with Clonin, like, YouTube playthroughs, so you can find them on my YouTube channel before he became a Factorio dev. Um, he was actually a YouTuber, a small, a small YouTuber, YouTuber like myself at the time, um, and we did some playthroughs together uh, with uh, Negative Root as well for one of them, I think, in Fish Sandwich um, before he became a Factorio dev. So, Clonin, of course, um, and then Backlav, not, I'm not saying like, any of the other devs are bad or anything like that. I don't think they are at all, um, but Backlav, you know, I've toured multiple of his spaghetti bases. We've talked on disc, we talk on Discord, you know, um, every so often. Um, he's been very nice. Every, I mean, all the devs seem really nice. It's just who I've interacted with most. So that's just who I have the most personal experience with. Um, in terms of artists, I mean, I love all the Factorio fan art, basically every single one I see, I really like, even though they're quite different. Some of them, um, in terms of YouTubers, I mean, I can't, I don't really want to, <laughs> cause I feel like if I just name one person, then it's just automatically going to be thought that I don't like the other people, which is not the case. Um, Honestly, I think I think most Factor YouTubers are really cool. Um, I definitely I, I definitely think they're all doing a pretty good job. Um, yeah, if if I had to like answer like what category of like people related to Factorio I like most, um, I mean that's kind of a hard question. I don't know, artists or devs, I guess. <laughs> um, other YouTubers are my competition. Not not that like I dislike them or anything again. Um, but I mean, the devs are great and the artists, I just love seeing the fan art. I, I absolutely love Factorio fan art of every kind. Um, and then the last one, this isn't really a question question. It's more of a response. And then I guess kind of a question to what I said last time when I was talking about Lego. And I, I think last time I mentioned, I was like, Hey, I'm about to go on this rant or whatever about Lego. And I know you guys probably aren't interested. Um, so Peter says, Factorio fans aren't interested in Lego. What makes you think that? Um, well, that's not really what I meant. Um, when I said that, it's more like, this is not a Lego channel, so probably you guys are less interested in Lego in a general sense than Factorio. That would be my guess. Um, I certainly think that Factorio fans um, are probably, you know, there's quite a few Factorio fans who are interested in Lego, like myself. Um, I think it's actually, it, it kind of scratches a similar itch, I find, um, very much so in the fact that, um, like, just like getting absorbed in it and time flying away. Oh my goodness, I have that happen really bad with, with Lego. When I'm building Lego, it's like it used to be for me with Factorio when I first started. And then like the feeling of, of accomplishment and completion you get when you finish a step or the build, um, it is a very similar type of satisfaction and feeling, um, at least to me, building Lego as playing Factorio. So I'm sure that there are a lot of people who like one, who, who like one, who like the other. Um, but just generally, you know, I don't post Lego content on here. Maybe I will. I'd love to. Um, uh, and I post basically only Factorio content. So I, I just made an assumption that probably people prefer <laughs> Factorio uh, content on the channel. Um, but yeah, there's that. I think that's going to do. I mean, that is going to do it, guys. That's all the all this questions we had. Uh, it was kind of slim last week for the questions. So definitely leave them in the comments of this video for me to answer next week. And uh, I believe that'll do it. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.